And what goes in a croissant dough? Well, let's have a look. So we start off with baker's flour. Baker's flour is important because we need the protein structure within our flour. Flour has five proteins. It has gliadine, glutenin, globulin, albumin, and protease. Gliadine and glutenin chemically bond together in the presence of water to form gluten. This is what gives our dough the ability to stretch and hold its shape. So 11.5% protein to 12.5% depending on which flour you can get. Our second ingredient is sugar. This is what gives us our sweetness but also aids to our colouring of our final product. We've also got salt. Salt will give us yeast control. It will also give us crust colour in the final product. Very important thing to have in our dough. And we have dry yeast. Now I use a Osmo tolerant yeast. This is a yeast that is designed for sweet based products. The other product that I have in, in the dough, in the base dough, is just a little bit of butter. This butter gives you flexibility and helps you roll out your dough and gives you um, the ability to fold it nicely. The other secret ingredient I have in mind is deactivated yeast. Deactivated yeast is dead yeast cells. What this does is it doesn't give you any fermentation, but it gives you beautiful flexibility in your dough. You can stretch this dough and get beautiful laminations without giving it long rests in between each fold. The other ingredients we're using is milk. Okay, this enriches the product. It also contains a sugar that is unfermentable to yeast. So the lactose within my milk stays in my product until it hits the oven and that gives you that rich golden brown colour from the caramelisation the, of the lactose. Also using water as well, um, just to combine our ingredients. The other thing I do to my croissant dough is I add a small portion, 10% of old scrap dough. So this is dough that's been rolled out and shaped into croissants and all the scrap bits that I cut off the ends I keep and then I mix back into the dough to give you a better flavour. This acts like a pre-ferment. So let's get mixing. So placing all of our ingredients into the mixing bowl. And we're going to give it five minutes on first speed. That five minutes allows the protein to absorb the water and to form that gluten that we require. And I want around about 75% gluten development in this dough. We are going to form more gluten as it sits and we're going to form more gluten structure as we laminate it. So we can't overmix our dough at this point. If we do, by the time we then do laminate it, we'll overstretch the gluten and we'll break the structure within the dough. So it's important to slightly undermix your dough. My Old croissant dough I've just cut into pieces and I'll feed that in and when we go into second speed. If I was to add that now, this portion of the dough would destroy the other portion of the dough because this has already been mixed to full development. So let's start, five minutes on first speed. So it's had its five minutes on first speed. We're now gonna let it mix for about 30 seconds and then we'll slowly add our scrap dough. This is running at around about 54% moisture or water and milk combination, okay? And the extra butter that we put into it will soften it off ever so slightly. So the thinner you can stretch it, the more gluten you have in it, okay? Now, as you can see with this one, as I stretch it, it's breaking. So it needs a little bit more. It is a very, it's a tight dough, so, but you can see that it's got good good stretch and good bounce in it, which is an indication of gluten formation. Gliadine gives you uh, the ability to stretch. Glutenin gives you ability to spring back. So we want the product to rise and stretch, but we also want it to hold its shape. That's why gluten is so important in these products. How do we know this is at 75%? We do a window test. So what we do is we grab a piece of dough and we just stretch it as far as we can and as thin as we can. This will tell us how much gluten is there. So the thinner I can get it and the clearer that it is, the more gluten that you have. So you can see that it's cloudy, but if you can see that mesh inside there, there's, so there's plenty of gluten there, it's got good bounce, so that's in good condition. This is 12 millimetres. If I now make my butter 12 millimetres, it will then give us beautiful, even lamination lines throughout our product. The butter I'm using is Corman butter. It's a um, cultured butter. 
and this will give our product a slightly natural yogurt flavour, slightly uh, lactic acid flavour. I think it gives us a really nice flavour profile to our croissant. But you can see that it's too hard. If I was to try to put this into our croissant now, it would rupture our layers. So we have to go through a process called conditioning. And it's effectively just rolling or beating the butter until it becomes uh, soft and pliable. And now that becomes a beautiful pliable piece of butter that we can now laminate into our pastry. So this is being rolled down to four millimetres. I'm now going to do a single fold in my butter. So now I have 12 millimetres of butter and uh, that will match the thickness of our pastry. Our butter is conditioned. Our dough that we had sitting in the fridge over for the last 24 hours after we mixed it yesterday is now ready to be laminated. So what I do is I place my butter in the middle of the pastry. I then get a knife and really carefully cut pastry either side of the butter. Then placing the cut portions on top. Okay, this exposes the four sides of the pastry and the butter. I believe this gives us a better lamination because we get 100% lamination. If I leave a fold in there, what happens is we can get portions of the dough that don't get laminated properly. So by cutting it and placing it on top, we get really crisp, clean edges. To secure the butter, I just put a few little dimples in it just to secure it, and then it's ready to go for its first roll. Okay. When you place it on the machine, make sure that the, you place it with the cut going into the machine. If you were to roll it that way, the cut would separate. So place it going long ways through the machine. And let's start rolling. I'm going to roll it down to around about 10 millimetres thick. We don't want to stress the dough too much. If we go down too quickly, we can put too much tension in the dough and it become a tight dough. Okay, so that's 10.5. Now what we need to do is we need to do what we call an offset book fold. We get one of our ends, we fold it three quarters up. Then we get our other edge three quarters down, making sure that our pastry meets a nice clean line in the middle. And then we fold it in half again. Now you can start to see how we start to generate our layers within our croissant. We always give our croissant pastry a 90 degree turn and we always roll out from our open ends, not our closed ends. Okay, so it's ready to go now back into the machine and roll out for its second roll. Same process as before, two increments at a time. Don't want to put too much stress on the dough, making sure that it hits the rollers straight. It's down to 10 millimetres. This time we're not going to do an offset book fold, we're going to do a single fold. So we always like to work with straight edges, so I'm just going to trim this edge straight, like so. And we fold it up around about half. Okay. We take our scraps that we've cut off one end and we just place them in the inside of our dough to create a straight line. And then we fold our right hand side over. And the dough has to meet edge to edge, okay? And you can see that's a little bit out, so we'll re-fix that, there we go. And now that goes into the fridge and it has a rest for at least 20 minutes. And we're just covering it to make sure that it doesn't form a skin. My croissant dough, I like to do one book fold and two single folds. This is its last single fold. So starting making sure that we're once again rolling through our open ends, not our closed ends. Down to 10 millimetres again. And now we're ready for our last single fold. So once again, one straight edge. Okay. This also helps check that our laminations are in good condition. Okay. One side up. Place your scrap inside, making a straight line. And then folding it over the top. That is ready to go back into the fridge about a half an hour rest, okay, allow the gluten to uh, relax and then that will be ready for rolling and shaping. Our dough's had its final fold and its final rest. It's now 
ready to be rolled out for its final shaping. Now we'll get most of the length through the open ends, but I'm just rolling it out in the closed ends just to get my width that I require. As you can see, my pastry is now starting to stress. You're going to see rounded edges. That means it's fighting against the gluten structure. So at this point, we turn it around and we'll get our length out of our open ends. Now, depending on what size of croissant and danish we're making, we'll determine how thick or thin the pastry will be. Generally, I roll this down to around about five mil to do a standard croissant. So it's had its time to rest around about five minutes just to so it stops the contraction of our product when we cut it. And we need to now prepare for both. We're gonna get croissants out of the bottom part and then panna chocolate out of the top. But if you notice that my, I've got my pastry hanging over the edge of the bench. In my world, everything is based off measurements and you can see with pastry, it's a natural product and it doesn't have a straight line. But if we use the bench as a straight uh, line, we can then uh, measure correctly for each product. So we'll just cut off that edge. The other reason I cut off the edge is that is the rounded edge. That won't uh, puff in the oven because all of my laminations go around the corners, around the bend. So we get rid of that and that becomes our scrap that we use for our next dough. So it's now ready to make croissant and panna chocolat. Depending on what one we're making, I normally have my croissant around about 30 centimetres long. I like to hand cut my croissants. I believe it gives me a better product. I get crisper edges. If we use the cutters, it does have a tendency to crimp or crush my edges. So I hand cut my, all of my product. So 30 centimetres. And then the top part will turn into our pan of chocolate, which will go 14 centimetres by eight centimetres. And we now need to place the chocolate inside it. So there are many ways of doing it. This is just the way that I do it. Evenly spaced, allowing for enough expansion to almost three times their size from what they are now. We're going to place them in a prover. Really important, we don't want to prove this over 32 degrees. Butter melts at 32 degrees, so we never uh, prove anything with butter in it over 32 degrees. So somewhere between 28 and 32 degrees as a maximum is what you want to prove these at. With around about 70 to 75% relative humidity, so a slightly damp environment. This stops the skin from forming on the outside. I've squared my ends off, I've got 30 centimetres, I now go through and mark 10 centimetres wide along the bottom. Up the top, I come in half of whatever I've done at the bottom measurement. So I did 10, so I come in five centimetres, and then from that five centimetre mark, I then measure 10 centimetres. That gives me a centre point for the triangle. I then cut my triangles. So we've got our uh, 30 centimetre by 10 centimetre triangles. We then just need to do a little cut at the base of each croissant, around about two centimetres. This helps us stretch the croissant a little bit when we come to roll it. Okay, and now they're ready to roll. So how I roll a croissant, try to imagine where they come from. They come from Paris or uh, France and the most iconic image in France is the Eiffel Tower. So I make my product look like the Eiffel Tower. I stretch it, I sacrifice the laminations on the very tip, and I then roll from the base up, making sure that it's centered. And by squashing it on the bench, your tip will always end at the bottom of your product. So do that again. So down, stretch out about a quarter of its length again, squash, roll, keeping that all centred. Ready to go into the provers. We normally do somewhere between 2.5 to 3 hours at no higher than 32 degrees. The recipe I use for my egg wash is whole egg and I like to water it down ever so slightly with a little bit of milk, but it's really important that we put a bit of salt in our egg wash. This denatures the egg wash and allows you to get this beautiful thin coating over your croissants and danish.
All right. So 16 minutes, 180 degrees, two seconds of steam. If you don't have the steam, that's okay. Steam just gives you a little bit more volume and you know you've got a good product when it starts to wobble. See how they're wobbling? Ever so slightly, they just wave in the wind. lamination is important. You've got to have the butter and you've got to have your pastry at the same consistency so you get really even layers out of your product. Proving is obviously also really important, making sure you get the maximum volume. This will also give you great taste um, because the longer you can ferment something the better flavours you'll come, get come through your product. And obviously baking as well. We're looking for three colours so I want yellow, golden brown and burnish. Okay, so the very tips just go ever so darker than what the middle bits are. That, what that does is give you three different levels of flavour in your product. And when you eat it, it exper you experience more flavour as you consume your product. Okay. Um, and just be patient with them. When you're baking, you've got to be patient. So give them the time. Time to give them beautiful colour, time to get beautiful volume, time to do just time. Baking is about time and just being patient with the product. The product will tell you when it's ready to go. It's always good to look at it in natural light because the ovens give you a false, a false reading. There we have it, some beautifully baked croissants and pan au chocolat. So as you can see, we've got beautiful laminations in the sides, beautiful gloss on the, on the top, and beautiful crispy outer shell. Let them cool down, and when we eat them, they're just gonna be delicious. We've gone through the process of making our croissants. Now, what makes a good croissant? Well, let's cut into it and see. So first off, I've got a beautiful glazed finish to my croissant. Nice and shiny, very attractive. Beautiful laminations down the side, uh, but now we need to cut into it and see if it's what its internals are like. So, just with a nice sharp knife, what we should have is a really open honeycomb finish to our product. And there it is, beautiful. Nice and open, beautiful structure, and it will just taste divine. I can't even talk. Yeah, yeah, because you can bite it now. Uh, can I? Yeah. Oh. It doesn't get much better than that. 